an Adelaide ICU nurse is probably not the first um, comes top of mind as thinking to be the next writer, uh, an internationally recognised writer at that. But um, uh, Dean May certainly has already made his mark uh, in this world and continues to juggle his jobs as an ICU nurse and as as a writer, Dean Mays, you've got your new book coming out very soon. Hello. <laughs> Thanks very much, Sonia. <laughs> now, this is the third one. Um, That's right. And you've managed to gain the attention of a Canadian publishing company with all your books to get this happening. How did you do that? Because a lot of people have, think they've got a book in them but don't know how to get published. Yeah, um, I started my career as a writer uh, back in sort of mid, late 2009. And at that stage, I'd virtually given up on the idea of ever being a published author. Uh, but I had this story that I wanted to tell and um, I decided that I was going to start a blog. And I started blogging this story. And so um, in a short space of time, and much to my surprise, I developed this following, people that were basically tuning in each week to read more instalments of this story. And one of the people um, that were tuning in, uh, surprisingly, uh, was the woman who is now my publisher, Michelle Halkett, um, up in Vancouver. And she contacted me out of the blue one day and said, look, I think you should be taking this seriously. I really like what you're doing. Um, and so to cut a long story short, I took the blog down, um, much to the angst of uh, my growing following. Yeah. And uh, about six months later, um, we went to print with uh, my first book, which was called The Hamel Down Dream. Isn't that fa what a fantastic? That's almost like a fairy story for a writer, isn't it? Oh, uh, it is. It was totally unexpected, and um, you know, I, I I didn't believe it to begin with when um, when Michelle uh, said, "Look, you know, this is who I am." And uh, it took me a while to sort of get my head around the fact that this was all for real. And um, yeah, but you know, that was that was six seven years ago now, and um, and Michelle and I are, are on the cusp of putting out my third book. Uh, called the recipient, and um, and as we were discussing off air, you know, geography is no barrier these days. No, so. not at all. No, because you actually haven't ever had to travel to Canada in relation to this. But, not, no. I mean, in a moment, we're going to be talking about how writers can pitch to publishers generally yep. um, for for their idea and their book. But this is someone who's come to you. It's uh, as I said, every writer's dream. That's I right. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the recipient, though, because your other two books perhaps were more creative, whereas this one delves into what you know on a on a realistic level. Your job uh, in the in the hospital. That's right. Yeah, um, the, the recipient basically tells the story of a young woman who um, receives a heart transplant and then begins taking on the memories of of the donor. Which and we've heard may actually happen well, totally. Yeah, and I mean, the idea for the novel actually came out of a couple of conversations I had with um, with transplant patients in my role as a nurse. And we were tossing the idea around of, of whether they had actually taken on the, the attributes and the behavioural characteristics of their donors. And there was a couple that kind of liked the idea but weren't really convinced by it. But then, then there were others, there was another... Um, uh, a woman that I knew for a period of time who had had a liver transplant, and she was convinced that she um, she had developed you know certain tastes for different foods. And, See, now and I've heard like about that. that. Yes, I've yeah, heard yeah, yeah. about things that people don't like previously and aren't following a transplant that maybe suddenly they love anchovies or something like that. That's that, right. That they didn't yeah, like yeah. Before. Yeah, um, and so I. I took that idea and, and thought, gosh, that'd be a really um, good idea to take into a book. Um, and then the, the, the extension of that idea was, well, what if this particular person discovers that her donor was perhaps a murder victim and the murder remains unsolved? Um, and so the recipient basically chuffs off into that area. So and can memories be taken on by the that's right yeah the recipient yeah um and so that's the basic premise behind the book and so i spent you know around about six months looking at different case studies of actual uh murder cases um that were predicated on the evidence of people who had um received organs so 
Um, and look, the juries. What? There, there are more than. There, there's a few? There, there is a few really? documented cases. And I mean, the, the jury's out as to whether, you know, they're actually, you know, genuine um, cases. Genuine rather than perceived. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but, you know, the, in these in these case files that I that I looked through, um, you know, certain murder cases were were solved potentially on the basis of evidence of people who had received these organs. Mm. So, yeah, and again, um, in the real world sense, you know, it, it's questionable. But as a storytelling tool, it's just it's irresistible. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. and so I was able to bring in you know elements of of my medical knowledge, obviously my nursing experience over the past 20 years, and, um, and craft this story that, uh, that is really different in terms of, you know. Hmm. I, I'm intrigued, as I think many people are, by someone in your position because, I mean, what you deal with in intensive care is the hard realities of tragedy often, sure. of the, the worst times in people's lives in yep. many, many instances. So, I mean, you're surrounded by reality in a way that, that many people aren't. Mm. Um, why did you, why have you chosen in your books to be sort of more, I guess, creative? I think your other books have been almost supernatural leaning in some instances. Sure. Rather than that, I guess, hard reality of yep. what you see on a day to day basis. Oh, look, I think it's a form of escapism, Sonia, you know. Um, you're, very, you're very right. Uh, what I see on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, over, over many years in this, in this career of mine, um, is, it's pretty hard. And, uh, you know, we often talk about needing to blow off steam somehow. And yeah. um, I think writing for me is that kind of creative element where I can, I can get in there and, and get into, you know, the, the guts of a story and, and just escape. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it takes me into some really weird and wonderful places. So. Well, Reality View has taken you to weird and wonderful places, haven't, hasn't it? I mean, you live in Adelaide now. You're published in Canada. Yep. Uh, you're getting great attention on an, from an international audience for your books. Yeah, it's been really good. Um, the US has been fantastic for me. Um, they've really embraced, you know, um, well, my two published books at the moment, um, The Hamildown Dream and uh, Gifts of the Paramank. Um, the UK has been really good. Australia's there. Um, and I'm, I'm still trying to crack that nut a bit. So, well, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that's to follow. Look, Dean, thank you so much for joining us on the program. When is the book released? So we're tentatively got it re uh, scheduled for October yep. uh, this year. Um, and so, yeah, obviously uh, I'll be you know, promoting that as, uh, as much as I can in the, in the weeks and months to come. So. Well, uh, an Adelaide writer doing well on the international scene. You might want to take a look at his book. It's called His newest book is called The Recipient. Uh, Dean Mays, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Sonia. Uh, author Dean Mays.